South Africa has the highest population of HIV positive people on the planet. Now, before you scroll, this is not a depressing video or a depressing channel. We're going to give you some positive news. There have been five cases of HIV and AIDS treatment where the patients were HIV and AIDS free. Here's the problem or the point of view I want to point out. South Africa spends 28 and a half billion rand annually on ARVs okay, that are supplied to the people, to the population that are HIV positive. Globally, we spend 324 billion rand. So, is the pursuit of a permanent cure for HIV and AIDS being overtaken by the pursuit of profit and population control? We're going to unpack this very, very serious topic today. And as always, next to me, Anna-Marie Mayer. Thank you very much. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get into some of the content. Thirty six point seven million people that are living with HIV or AIDS. Most of that community is middle to low income families. So the challenge is they either don't have the means to go and number one, get tested um, and, you know, start a process of ARVs, antiretrovirals, or number two, they simply are not educated as to what it actually can develop into and how you can lose your life. Now, the ARV technology of today has evolved immensely and it, it keeps it under control, and it, but it, it, it doesn't cure you. It always remains you there. You can't stop. You can't stop it. So um, 2007 was the first case where there was a successful cure for HIV positive patient. Mm. That was, it's referred to the Berlin patient. Yes. It's Timothy Ray Brown. And they, they did it like a bone marrow transplant um, to destroy and replace these cells. And up till his date, um, he passed away in 2020. So that's 13 years later. Yes. The guy was HIV free. There was also mentioned the patient, the name never was released, but it was called the Dusseldorf patient. Yes. And he, up till today, is HIV free. And living. And living. Okay. Again, so there's definitely a cure. Now, they don't say all of these cures was bone marrow transplant. Yes. But eventually, that's what we need. Because um, the antiretroviral just suppress and keep everything down. Yes. And that's basically, the moment you stop, it's just going to release back again and it's going to flame up. So you can still transmit the, the disease. So we need to cure it. So, so here's, here's, my, here's my question. And um, perhaps we can stimulate some comments on this and create a little bit of a movement because if you consider 300... Let me give you the right figure again. 324 billion rand is spent annually on ARVs by governments. So governments, MPOs, non-profit organizations. So, so there's a whole bunch of people that contribute towards controlling the pandemic. And having the point of view that the first reported cases were in the 80s, early 80s, 81, 82, 85, around there, early 80s. So we've had three decades to deal with this and HIV is the only pandemic that we haven't sprung back from. It took us 18 months to create a vaccine for COVID. I know where you're going. This is either money making racket or is it just to control our population? Who benefits out of this? Someone is benefiting. The, 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 the companies that manufacture the ARVs because what sort of profits are they writing at 324 billion annual sales? And as a taxpayer, you pay for that. As a taxpayer, we pay for it because yes. most of the people that are positive are, like we said in the beginning, middle to low income families and they go to state hospitals and ARVs are provided so that we can control the disease. And right from the start, everyone used to say, but we need to start in the beginning. So and that is to educate. But we're not even over that part. Then access to health care. We're not even over that part after all these years. Yeah. So we stuck with the first two problems that can be solved easily. Yeah, so 
considering that there are five successful treatments that have been done over the past three decades. If we can, for example, allocate a percentage of the 324 billion towards going and going all in on reverse engineering the five different scenarios mm -hmm. and then using that as a baseline. Can we cure this disease once and for all? That's the first question. Have we cured it but kept it under wraps so that either, like we said in the beginning, we are looking at the profitability of this disease actually existing and number two, the population control. So if you like this content and you feel that we have brought value or perhaps just stimulated a conversation that can be taken further, please leave us a comment as well as the like button and... And please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell. You'll receive those notifications. Thank you very much. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.